today I'm going to test and cut apart these five winter boots made by some of the most reputable outdoor brands to see who makes the best winter boot and to see if any of these boots are relying on their good name to sell a bad product. Does your hairline look like mine where it looks like someone is strategically deforesting your hair follicles? Well, Keeps is a sponsor of this video, and if you don't know what Keeps is, Keeps is a subscription service that focuses on making it easier and more affordable for men to treat their male pattern baldness online. Did you know that two out of three men will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? I'm well on my way. And the best way to prevent hair loss is by doing something while you still have some hair left. And with Keeps, a licensed doctor will review your information online and recommend the right hair loss treatment plan for you. Then your treatment is shipped directly to your front door every three months. And the cool thing is you can message your doctor 24-7 with any questions or concerns that you have along the way. Plus, you can track your progress with, with the Keeps progress tracking tool. And maybe best of all, if you're cheap like me, Keeps offers generic versions of FDA approved medication for hair loss, which makes it much more affordable to get into. So find out why Keeps has more five-star ratings than any of its competitors and why hundreds of thousands of men trust Keeps for their hair loss prevention. So go to keeps.com slash roseanvil or click the link in my description to receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Roseanville. Check them out. The link in my description and thanks again to Keeps for sponsoring this video. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to quickly go over each of these boots, maybe like a minute or less, just hitting the highlights about these boots. And then we're going to do a waterproof test, then a heat retention test, and then we're going to chop each of them in half to see what's on the inside and see if these guys are hiding anything on the inside of their boots. So let's start with Sorel. So the brand is Sorel. The style is the Caribou boot. The color is Bruno. They weigh two pounds, six ounces. They retail for $170 and they are made in Vietnam. The upper of this boot is made from a waterproof nubuck leather, which means they basically just lightly sand the surface to give it a little bit more of a matte finish. And it's around two to 2.2 millimeters thick. The insulation is this removable nine millimeter washable recycled felt lining. And it also has like this crinkly reflective layer on the inside to help seal on the heat. The way this is waterproofed is this, this stitch line that connects the upper that's leather and the bottom that's rubber is sealed on the inside with seam seal, which is basically like a, almost like a contact cement to prevent that water from leaching all the way through. The outsole is a studded rubber outsole and the construction is a vulcanized construction, which it means it's made of several different parts that are, are layered together and then cured together at the same time, creating a bond between them without much glue. And the way that they describe this boot on their website is, our most iconic winter boot is back with fresh upgrades. It features a sleeker look, seam sealed waterproof leather and non-slip traction. Supreme insulated warmth adds the finishing touches to the greatest boot of all time which is a pretty bold claim. From the outside, it looks like a really good boot and obviously I've cut this one in half already. And if you want the full breakdown of that one, I'll put a link in the description. But it definitely is a heavy duty looking boot that isn't quite as heavy duty and insulated and uh, durable as you might expect. But that's only based off this one boot that I've cut in half and part of th what this video is, is cutting apart all these different boots to help put this boot in perspective because maybe I'm wrong, maybe it is a really good deal. Next up is the Kamek, so the brand is Kamek. The style is a nationwide boot, the color is dark brown, the weight is two pounds, two ounces. They retail for $99 and they're made in India. So the upper of this boot is a suede leather, which means it doesn't have that grain section at the very top that is that most people associate with that smooth leather finish. And it's just not as strong of a leather and it's not quite as waterproof because it doesn't have that tight grain pattern to repel water. The insulation is really similar to the Sorel with the removable boot. that They call it their Heat MX that has 200 Gs of 3M Thinsulate that they say is comfortable down to negative 40 degrees. The waterproofing on this boot is also similar to the Sorel with the seam seal around the inside of the boot. And both this boot and the Sorel don't have a waterproof lining on the inside like some of these other boots are gonna have. They just rely on the rubber on the bottom, the waterproofing in the leather, and the seam seal to keep the water out. The outsole is a synthetic rubber that's a single piece rather than the multi-piece vulcanized construction of the Sorel. It's just a single piece that's all molded in one single injection mold. And the construction of this boot is they take that one piece bottom and the upper that they construct and they sew that together and then seam it and it's so it's kind of a two-piece construction and the way they describe this boot on their website is whatever the weather you'll have no hesitation about going outside in our nationwide men's wide winter boots these winter boots for snow are perfect for tough winter jobs around the house or for taking kids sledding too and my initial thoughts on these boots are that they are really similar to the Sorel's and a lot of people consider these just as good as the Sorel boots but for $70 less but I do think there is a little bit of a quality difference between the two it seems like the lining isn't quite as nice and obviously the leather isn't a full grain leather like the Sorel's or at least a, a leather that has a grain in it 
And then if we move to the Columbia boot, so the brand is Columbia, the style is the Bugga boot, the color is Cordovan and black, and there's no actual Cordovan in this boot, it's just the color name. They weigh one pound, 11 ounces, they retail for $150, and they're made in Vietnam. The upper of this boot is a, a really heavily finished, cheap leather. It's, it's basically a suede leather with a heavy plastic layer on top to make it look more like a higher quality leather, but in all reality, it's just gonna end up splitting, and it's, I just don't like plastic coatings on leather. The insulation on this boot is the Omni Heat Infinity Reflective Lining that has 400 Gs of insulation. And I don't really know if this shiny insulation or this reflective material is gimmicky and doesn't do anything or if it actually does something. That's why we're gonna do the heat test to see if we, can, if we can figure out how much heat these boots can actually retain. And the way that this boot is waterproofed is with their out dry waterproof breathable membrane, which means there's a layer of waterproof material on the inside of this boot that prevents water from seeping all the way through unlike a, a fabric or a leather that's gonna slowly let it seep through. And the outsole of this boot seems to be built a lot more like a more modern boot with the foam midsole with a thinner rubber outsole. And the way this boot is constructed is also really similar to a more modern boot in the way that it's a cemented construction rather than a sewn or a vulcanized construction. And the way that they position and describe this boot on their website is, take on the cold in this reimagined classic built for all day comfort and performance. And my initial thoughts on these boots is, is basically what they said is they, they took these old school boots and tried to make it a more modern boot with more modern technology and construction types and more materials that are maybe more insulating underneath your foot with all the foam in the midsole. I don't really know how thick it is, so we'll see we get it cut in half, but I have high hopes for the Columbia boot. Then to the North Face boot. So the brand is North Face, the style is the Thermal Ball, the color is Flax, they weigh one pound, four ounces, they retail for $129 and they're made in Vietnam. The upper of this boot is a waterproofed PU coated leather, but it's not polyurethane coated in the same way as the Columbia where they actually put a fake layer on top. The leather in the North Face is still a grain leather. You can see it still has some in it and it almost has the same nubuck look as a Sorel's, but instead of a heavy coat of fake leather, they infuse the leather with polyurethane to make it more waterproof. And then the sleeping bag looking part of the upper is a 100% recycled PET baffled ripstop shaft with non-PFC durable water repellent. And I don't fully understand what all that marketing jargon means. I think it's more than anything, it's, they're just trying to get the look of almost like a puffer jacket in the shaft of the boot. But it is gonna be really flexible and it's probably fairly warm but it definitely is a little bit gimmicky. And then for the insulation, they call it the Thermal Ball Eco Insulation. They don't really say what it's rated to. They don't say how many grams of insulation or anything. So it's, once again, it just seems like there's some insulation in here and they're using marketing jargon to not tell you exactly what it is. And the waterproofing of this boot doesn't have the same membrane as the Columbia boots. They're, the materials themselves are just waterproof. So it's maybe not ultimately as waterproof, but they, they seem like they are fairly waterproof materials. And, and the outsole construction is similar to the Columbia as well, where you've got the foam midsole for extra insulation and comfort and the rubber outsole. But I was actually really surprised at how shallow the lugs on this outsole are. And the construction is also a cemented construction like the Columbia. The way they position and describe this boot on their website is the mid-cut lightweight thermal ball boot zip up will keep your feet warm, protected, and stylish through all winter occasions. My initial thought on these is when I got them in hand, they, they definitely feel a lot lighter and cheaper than all the rest of the boots. And it has a zipper and I hate zippers on boots, especially, you know, a tall boot for winter that's supposed to be weather resistant. And it does have some overlapping material to help make it a little more waterproof, but I just hate zippers on boots 99% of the time. And then finally to the last boot, the Keens. So the brand is Keen, the style is the Revel 4. The color is Canteen and black. They weigh one pound, 12 ounces. They retail for $200 and they're made in China. So the upper of this boot is made of a waterproof leather and performance mesh in their terms. And the leather itself is a pretty decent leather. It's definitely better than the Columbia and the suede leather in the Kamex. So it's pretty on par with the other two boots that have a grain. And it still has a buff texture, just like the North Face and the Sorrells. And the insulation on this boot is the Keen Warm Recycled PET insulation, which is rated to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit and negative 40 degrees Celsius, which are two completely different temperatures. So I guess think in terms of Celsius and this boot will be warmer, but it's probably just a typo. My guess is that these are actually rated to the negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit because these have 400 grams of the Keen Warm insulation. And the waterproofing on these boots are similar to the Columbia with the waterproof membrane. They call it their proprietary waterproof breathable membrane that lets vapor out without letting water in. And then the outsole of this boot is similar to the previous two with the foam midsole and the rubber outsole. But the thing that I really like about the Keens is they have these little 
spots of the keen polar traction, which have microscopic shards of rubber that really grip into the ice. And it's Vibram has a really similar style outsole and it's crazy how well these things grip on even just solid sheets of ice. And the way that Keen describes these boots is no need to wait for someone else to make the first tracks. We gave our waterproof winter boot for men a higher profile for deeper powder and our warmest insulation rated at negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, not Celsius, plus better grip for snow and ice. And my initial thoughts on this boot is that this might be the dark horse in this race. I didn't really expect much from it but there's a lot of features that it seems like it combines the best of a lot of these features so we'll see how it actually stacks up in the test and when we get it cut in half but the one concern i have with this this boot is that it isn't gusseted nearly as high it's only gusseted to this this deeper eyelet right here which the rest of them are, are gusseted a lot higher and now that we've gone over each of these boots and you kind of have a basic understanding of them it's time to do the waterproof test and the way we're going to do that is fill up our fish tank full of water and basically submerge these boots for five minutes to see if we can find any spots where water leaks through or any fail spots or how or even how the, the different materials absorb or don't absorb the water so let's get started All right, so the results of the test are in and all of them performed really well. None of them leaked and we did it for five minutes straight, submerged them. And I can't imagine anyone's standing in puddles for longer than five minutes. Um, so I think it's pretty it's pretty safe to say the, they are all waterproof. Really the only significant thing that I noticed was on the Keens, this leather really absorbs the, the water really quickly. It really gets deep into the leather and doesn't seem like it's treated as well as the rest of the leathers for waterproofness. The Kamex also absorbed a fair amount of water, but the Sorrells did a really good job of repelling it. The North Face did a really good job of repelling it. And surprisingly, the Columbia boots did the best. Well, I guess it's not too surprising because it's got that really heavy coat of plastic on top. They all do a really good job of being waterproof. And since they're all waterproof, the next tier down of waterproofness is how high the tongues are gusseted. And that's where the Keens fall a little bit short. And I'll put a quick shot up of how, uh, how high each tongue is gusseted for comparison. And that's where the Keens fall short because they, they have by far the lowest gusseted tongue. And so really these boots are only gonna be waterproof up to that certain point, which is kind of a bummer. So now that that test is done, let's do the heat retention test. And the way that we're going to do this is we're gonna heat up five different socks full of equal weights of rice and heat them up to an equal temperature of 125 degrees Fahrenheit and stuff them inside of the boot and create a seal to make sure that the inside, the innermost part of the toe is sealed up with that hot rice sock so that when we pull them out, we can get a fair temperature of how hot the inside of the boot at the toe stayed over the 20 minutes. And after the 20 minutes, we pulled the rice socks out and measured it at the toe. And the results are the Sorrel dropped from 125 to 83, the Kamex dropped to 105, Columbia dropped to 93, North Face dropped to 109, and the Keen dropped to 92. So super surprising results. The boot that I thought was gonna be the worst, the North Face boots, because they, they just feel the cheapest, they look the cheapest, and they have a lot more of the gimmicky stuff in them, perform the best. They're by far the warmest out of all the boots. And the one boot that I thought for sure was gonna be the most heat retaining and the most hot and the, was the most winter boot, the Caribou boots, did the worst. And the, the cheaper version of the Caribou boots, the Kamex, did significantly better than them. And that was really surprising. Even though I've cut these apart, I still thought this, this thick booty was gonna keep these boots warm. So really surprising results. And obviously there's some room for error in this test, but the, the amount that each of them dropped and the consistency across the several times we ran this test makes me feel pretty comfortable in the results. So now let's try to draw some conclusions as to why each of these boots performed the way they did for good and for bad by cutting them in half to see what's inside and in the longest cutting montage that I've probably ever done. So let's cut them in half.
<laughs> okay, that was a bit easier than I thought to cut through $1,000 worth of boots. So let's start with the Sorrells. So we really have two different types of boots. We've got the Sorrells and the Kamex that are uh, more of a snow boot that has an interior booty that's removable. And then we've got the cemented boots with the foam midsole and the rubber outsoles. As for the booty boots, the Kamex have a significantly thicker rubber at the toe than the Sorrells did, which was one of the complaints I had about the Sorrells because there's a lot of people have issues with the Sorrells cracking because it's so thin right there. But the problem with the, the Kamex is you don't have anything underneath of the booty. You, you're literally just standing on the outsole there's a bunch of voids in the outsole, so eventually it might not be as comfortable as the Sorrells underfoot, but the rubber on the outsole is thicker, so it should insulate more than the Sorrells, solving at least part of the problem that people have with, with the Sorrells where the heat leaves from the bottom of your foot because of how thin the outsole is on the Sorrells. But the Sorrells do have the advantage on having a higher quality leather and the Caribou boot is just the classic winter snow boot. But also I forgot to mention that the Kamex do have that reflective material on the bottom that I wasn't sure of why the Sorrells didn't because they have it through the, the upper part of the booty but not on the bottom. So between the two booty boots, the Sorrell is $70 more and I don't think you get $70 worth of value out of the Sorrells. And honestly, regardless of the price, I would probably choose the Kamex as a snow boot. But I also wouldn't be using a snow boot for everyday wear. I would, these are these are boots that I would wear like 10 or 20 times a year at tops. So for that specific reason, I think the Kamex are a better boot just generally and for the price, so a better value boot out of the two of them. And as for the cemented foam midsole boots, the Columbia and the North Face are almost identical because both of them have the rubber outsole, the foam midsole, a little composite shank, and then a lasting board with the, with the removable insole. So the question I have is where does that heat retention difference in the North Face as being the warmest boots and, and almost 15 degrees more warm than the Columbia's come from? because they really are almost identical. And if you looked at the cross section of these, you might think that the Columbia's have more insulation around the toe and they have this reflective fancy lining, but they're not as warm as the North Face. And the only thing that I can really think of is the difference in materials on the outside because the North Face has a real leather upper versus the Columbia boots have a lot of synthetic materials and even the leather is a cheap leather, especially right around the toe. It's not leather, it's a synthetic, almost rubber-like material. And so maybe that material allows heat to escape a lot easier than, than leather does because leather is a fairly decent insulator. But other than that, these, these two boots are shockingly similar. They, they're built almost identically. And I don't think there's much of a difference in all reality between these two boots. Yes, the North Face are technically more warm and retain more heat, but deciding between these two boots, I would just go off of whichever one you like more, at least appearance-wise. As for the Keens, these are built also almost identically to these other cemented boots, except they have a few extra little bits that are upgraded. The biggest one that I noticed that I wouldn't have ever noticed unless we cut them in half was you've got one more layer of insulating material between the shank and the lasting board. And you also get these grippy little ice nubs on the end that really do grab ice a lot better than just a straight rubber outsole. Plus you got the wide toe box of Keens because most Keens just have a wide toe box. So, so it allows you to wear a thicker, heavier wool sock to keep your feet even warmer. But you also have the issue with the, the tongue not being gusseted as high and the leather absorbing a lot of water. And they're the most expensive boots in this lineup. They're $200 and you can get two pairs of the Kamex for the price of the Keens. So overall, I would say the Sorrells are definitely using their brand name and their heritage of making winter boots to sell a product that isn't quite what most, think, most people think it is. I don't think it's a bad boot, I just think it's a bit pricey for what you get and there's better alternatives in the Kamex. And I think the Kamex are the best value boot out of this lineup because you can get these on Amazon for like 90 bucks. I'll, I'll put a link in the description. And for a dedicated snow boot that you're just gonna wear on occasion, it's hard to beat that $90 price point and the insulation and the thicker materials. I think it's the best value boot in this lineup. But I wouldn't wanna wear it every single day and it is a lot uglier than the Sorrells. The Columbias, I, I would say they're the most like meh of the group. They don't really excel in any particular way, but there's nothing really overtly horrible about them. So they're just, they're fine. I, I, if, if you end up buying these, I don't think you're gonna regret it. I, 
I just don't love them. They're just meh. The North Face was maybe the most surprising of this lineup. I thought for sure that when going into this, I, I almost regretted buying these for this lineup because like, oh, they're just not up to the same quality and the standard. But they ended up being the warmest out of all of them. But they do have a zipper, which I hate. And they're probably just not as sturdy with the upper and all these more synthetic materials. But out of the lineup, I would say these are probably the best casual winter wear boots out of this lineup. You know, because they're, they're a lot slimmer than the rest. They're the warmest out of the bunch. They have this shaft that's nice and flexible and easy to wear. And they are easy to put on with the terrible zipper. And then to the dark horse of the race, the Keens. I think this is the best overall boot. I think it does all those little things better than all the rest of the boot. And it also has the most features that are gonna benefit you day to day. And Keens are notoriously comfortable, but they're twice the price and they have that classic Keen look. These definitely look like a Keen boot. But as long as you're willing to deal with the, the flaws and you have the money to buy these boots, I think these are the best overall. So let me know which of these five boots you would choose as your best winter boot or the best overall boot. And let me know what you thought of this video of taking an entire series where we would usually do individual videos and then a finale. This one, we compressed them all into a single video. It was a lot more effort. So let me know what you thought of it. And if you, if you could help me out by getting this video into the algorithm by liking, commenting, and subscribing so that I can justify doing more of these videos. Because I, I kind of like this compressed series, especially for boots that aren't quite as interesting on their own. So thank you guys for everything you do and thanks so much for all your help. See ya.